Oh boy. This is the sign that I need to go buy groceries. Got on my last cup of coffee. That's not a good thing for me. Oh my goodness. Oh, we'll get this one going. Move away from that because it gets a little bit loud. Can kind of impact my audio just a little bit. So, you know, I want to wish everybody that's in London getting ready to run the London Marathon good luck tomorrow. I was just checking out the uh, weather report. Looks like you guys are going to have some pretty good weather. It might be a little chilly in the morning, so you'll definitely need some corral clothes, that's for sure. I think my guess is, and I didn't look at the hour by hour, but about the time that you're going to be lining up or getting into your corrals, probably in the low 40s, 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so that's a bit chilly, but I think you're gonna have right around 50 degrees maybe, um, Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius to actually run the marathon. So you should be good there. Once you get there, get started, you'll be fine. And hopefully you'll have a really good race tomorrow. So again, wishing all you guys good luck. Oh, I'm, you know, For those of you that are there, I'm definitely living vicariously through you because First, I'm so excited to try to get back to running soon. And we'll talk about more of that here in just a minute. Uh, but definitely on my bucket list is to run the London Marathon. I want to do that so bad. So maybe in 2025, maybe 2026. I don't know. I'll definitely put in to run it again next year. I keep trying, but I haven't been chosen yet. The alternative is to go with something like, you know, destination marathons or marathon tours, uh, you know, a tour group. You know, where basically you're buying your bib to get in. Um, and if you guys have done that, let me know how it worked out for you. I was checking some of the prices and woo, it's a little bit on the high side. Holy cow. You know, and uh, the packages that, that I had seen at least initially were $6,000 somewhere in that ballpark. And that would be just for myself. And I don't know what it would cost uh, if I were taking it, you know, Kim with me, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and then that doesn't include your plane tickets and some of the other meals and things like that. So, holy cow, we're talking about a pretty expensive trip to go through a tour group. So I'd love it if you guys had some feedback about that. I'm going to continue to try because I think it would be a lot less expensive if I can get my bib um, just through the uh, through the lottery. So that's what I'm going to be trying to do. And if that happens, then, you know, I can, you know, I can find a more cost effective way to get to London to run it. But I'll also be putting in for the other ones, too. You know, I want to go international. I want to do Tokyo and Berlin, you know, because I'm going for the six stars. And so, you know, I'm definitely going to be working on that. So any tips that you guys might have along those lines, that would be great, too. Um, so anyway, uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about, you know, just kind of where I'm at and what my next steps are. I'm going to move over to my sofa and sit down and we'll chat more here in just a sec. All right, so just a little bit of a follow-up um, to, to where I'm at and what's coming up next. Uh, so far, I've been cleared to do low impact, you know, body weight types of exercises. Um, definitely when it comes to cardio, you know, I'm okay, like I said before, riding my bike, that kind of thing, elliptical. Uh, but I'm, I'm more or less just kind of taking a little bit of time off from that repetitive types of motions that I've been doing so much of. And in part because this is really a golden opportunity for me to give my body a chance to reset. You know, I've struggled a lot with tendonitis in my ankle and bursitis in my hip. And um, the MRI showed, you know, some tendonitis in my hamstring, which I knew was there. I knew something was going on there because that was starting to hurt me a little bit. So this is really just my opportunity to do a major reset on my body, let everything kind of calm down, especially all of the itises that I have, because the only way that that really starts to get better is by giving it a little bit of rest. You know, I'm doing all my mobility stuff and things that I have traditionally done in the past. I'll continue to do that. So I'm good. You'll still see yoga showing up on my uh, Strava account. And, you know, I'll, I'm going to do some uh, strengthening exercises, but it won't be uh, weight bearing. So it'll be basically just body weights types of stuff because I haven't been cleared yet to be able to lift, you know, lift any weights, any additional weights, but that's coming up soon. So um, as I mentioned before, I have a final appointment on May 7th, which they want to do some x-rays. So that means that I probably won't get the results of the x-rays 
for a few days after that, after the radiologist has had a chance to read it, share it with my doctor, so then I'll have a follow-up with him after that. So it's a process, it's a long process. I hope maybe by the end of that week, maybe, um, you know, the week of May 7th, which I think May 7th is on a Wednesday. So maybe by that Friday, you know, I'll be able to have a consultation or early that next week with my doctor so that we can start to put together a return to run plan. So I probably misspoke a little bit the other day when I said my next training block will be Chicago starting June 24th. Well, that's not entirely correct because really my next training block, at least in my mind anyway, is going to be my return to run program. And that's probably going to be the most critical training block that I've done to date because I need to ensure that I'm building a good base and that everything is coming along and healing properly so that I can have a successful training block when I do start training for my next marathon, which again, hopefully will be June 24th is when I'll start that. So that's kind of what's coming up next for me. You know, I'm going to continue, like I said, to do some low impact um, strengthening exercises. The ones that I did using my jump box, and of course I wasn't jumping on it, but I was using it as a step up box. So um, I did some step up, some step, some side step downs, um, some split squats, some you know Bulgarian split squats, but they weren't weighted. Uh, I did a little bit of hamstring work, um, you know things like that. They really, really did a good job on my on my quads, especially because um, they were sore for a couple days after doing that workout. So I thought, good, you know, I, I definitely targeted some good areas there where I fell down or where I didn't feel like I got as much out of it as I was hoping to, or thought I was in, thought I was getting, uh, was more on my, my glutes and maybe around my hip area and that kind of thing, because I didn't really feel it after the workout. And while that's not always a telltale sign, I know for certain when I have a little bit of DOMS that I did some work, right? And, and um, you know, so I know that I hit the targeted areas that I was going for. Uh, so my gym days are, are planned for Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So Friday, um, the workout that I did, so that was yesterday, and yesterday's workout, uh, I was really targeting my calves because I didn't feel like I got much out of it for what calf work that I did do. I don't think I did enough of it to really reap the benefits uh, um, you know, of the workout. So you know, I targeted that area. I did um, you know, a, a lot of um, calf raises um, in different styles and things like that. And, and you know, I'll put together a future video where I showcase some more of those types of things. But I also was working on my glutes. So I was doing glute bridges and I was working on my hamstrings. I didn't feel like I got much work on my hamstring either. Um, so it was doing some, you know, walkouts to work, you know, the bridge walkouts to work on my hamstring and uh, some things like that. Some other exercise that I want to add in to work specifically on my hamstring would include, you know, the use of one of those big, I don't know what they call it, medicine ball, one of those big blow up like yoga style balls um, where I can do some hamstring curls using that, you know, that kind of stuff. Things that I can do right now where um, I'm not going to risk any kind of additional injury or set me back at all with my with my hip healing. Um, anyway, so that's that's where I'm at right now. That's where I'm at. And, you know, I feel pretty good about it. Um, I did. So I did go for a, a walk um, because I was just getting stir crazy. You know, I I feel guilty almost um, and I, I just I want to do more especially with the cardio because that's where you know I just really enjoy doing that kind of stuff you know running especially but you know riding my bike a good close second you know that kind of thing and I, I've been purposely like I said taking it easy with that repetitive motion that I've been doing for so long uh, just let everything calm down. But I got really bored and stir crazy, so I went out for just a really nice, easy walk. Um, really not trying to push the pace at all, not like trying to, you know, walk a 5K or do any kind of power walk or anything. So I want to really take it easy on my hip. Um, but then about, you know, I don't know, maybe three quarters of the way through that, I started thinking, what am I doing? I should be back just resting it take advantage of the couple of weeks before I get into my next training block, so, which again will be my return to run training program. 
Um, so I kind of was starting to question or doubt myself for being out there walking as much as I did. Even though it wasn't that much. I think I was out there about an hour. And, you know, on the upside, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't hurt my hip any. There wasn't any kind of pain afterwards. Uh, but the whole time I kept thinking, just relax, just take it easy for a couple of weeks. It's okay. Um, you know, it's okay. It's just, I'm just not used to it. I've been basically in a training block, um, for the, over a year, you know, cause I'd start one, I'd have just a little bit of time and then I would start another one and start another one, you know, kind of thing. So, uh, it's just, I've just grown accustomed to it. And now that, uh, you know, I'm trying to do things a little bit differently, I guess I'm just having a hard time trying to just relax a little bit for a couple of weeks. So um, I'm going to I'm going to get better at it and I'm going to get better at it for sure. All right, you guys. Hey, I hope you're having a wonderful weekend and uh, enjoy the London Marathon if you're there running it or if you're watching it here in the States. You know, for me, I'd have to get up and tune it in around 3.30 in the morning to see the start of the race. Uh, I will there's a good chance I'll be up at that time. The hard part will be trying to find a way to watch it. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know where I can stream it from. You know, I might try looking up on YouTube. Maybe somebody will be streaming it on there that I can watch. I don't have, I can't get the BBC iPlayer that I think they're going to be broadcasting it on for streaming because I don't live in the UK, you know, and I don't think it's available to us here in the U.S. But Anyway, good luck to everybody, and I hope you're having a wonderful weekend, and I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. Thanks for making it to the end of this video. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Woo! Uh, time for me to put on some pants and uh, head in and pick up a few groceries because I'm going to need that second cup of coffee. I'll see you guys later.